The magneto-optic Kerr effect is the rotation of a light wave reflected by a magnetized material, commonly used as a way of measuring how strongly a material is magnetized. In order to understand the Kerr effect, then, we must understand light as an electromagnetic wave propagating in the same direction that light moves. In an electromagnetic wave, electric and magnetic fields oscillate, per oscillate perpendicular to the direction of propagation and to each other. The wavelength is the distance between two equivalent parts on the waves, most often measured peak to peak. And however many times the wave travels through a wavelength in a given time period is its frequency. Polarized light can only oscillate in specific planes or directions, contrary to unpolarized light, which has many electric and magnetic waves oscillating in multiple planes, and most light is unpolarized. Linearly polarized light, for example, oscillates in a single plane like shown in the diagram. Unpolarized light can be passed through a material with long strands of atoms lined up to act like fences to block all light except that in the same plane, making the light linearly polarized. Another type of polarization is circular polarization, where the field has a constant value but rotates around, forming a circle as the wave propagates. Two circularly polarized waves can model a linearly polarized wave. If we have two circular waves traveling in opposite directions, they will cancel each other out along one direction and add in the other. As they move around, they will continue to cancel in that direction, staying symmetric around the plane of polarization. Light always travels at the same speed in a vacuum, though it will move slower when it travels through a different material. The extent to which light slows down is quantified by the refractive index, calculated as the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed in a material. Though the distance light travels in a second changes, the number of times a wave cycle is completed does not. So the length of each wave must decrease, and once a light wave has reached the end of a material, it may exit at a different part of the wave cycle than light traveling at a different speed. The refractive index is not always the same for a single material because light of different colors or in materials that are magnetized, different polarizations may have different indices, although the differences tend to be minor. Let's consider circularly polarized waves reflected off a surface. When light is reflected from most materials, it does not cleanly bounce off like a ball hitting a wall. Instead, it usually enters the material up to a few wavelengths depth. After traveling some distance, the field of a circular wave rotates because it's at a new part of its wave cycle. Let's consider a second circular wave rotating in the opposite direction. The two waves are symmetric around a plane where a linearly polarized wave would form from the combination of the two. Since refractive indices change with polarization in a magnetized material, the two will not stay entirely synchronized changing the plane that the linearly polarized combination oscillates in and rotating it slightly. For the simplest case where we're dealing with linearly polarized light reflecting off a magnetic surface, there are three basic geometries of the magneto-optic Kerr effect, one for each dimension. The Kerr effect in this simple case is proportional to the dot product of the vectors that light is traveling and the magnetization of the material. A vector has a magnitude, but it also has a specific direction. And so the dot product is only equal to the simple product of the two vectors' magnitudes if the directions are exactly the same. It's equal to the negative value of the product if the directions are opposite. Uh, if the two vectors are perpendicular, then the dot product is going to be zero, and it's going to sit between these two values if the vectors are only partially aligned. In order to achieve the largest observable Kerr effect, then, the light should be aligned as closely as possible to the magnetization. For the longitudinal geometry, this means a very shallow approach. And for the polar geometry, this means sending the light almost straight towards the material. The transverse geometry, however, is always perpendicular and it gives a dot product of zero. Since the Kerr effect is proportional to magnetization, it is often used to gauge the magnetization of materials like thin films. In order to do this, a laser is sent through a linear polarizer towards the magnetic material, and the light undergoes the Kerr effect when it reflects off the magnet. The reflected light is sent through a second linear polarizer, arranged to polarize perpendicular to the first one. Since the light would ordinarily have no field perpendicular to the plane of polarization after going through the first polarizer, it should be completely blocked off by the second polarizer. Any light that is passing through must be the result of the Kerr effect slightly rotating the wave out of plane. And so the intensity of the light that passes through the second 
polarizer must be proportional to the Kerr effect and by extension the material's magnetization. So the intensity of this light can be measured and then the magnetization can then be determined relative to the material saturation magnetization. Let's look at possible data we might get from a petty ordinary power magnet. What we're trying to do with the Kerr effect apparatus is measure the relative magnetic strength of a magnet against uh, the applied field. What we measure directly is the intensity of light after being polarized to isolate for the light rotated out of plane. That is, we're measuring the rotation. Once the data is fitted to compare each data point against the maximum rotation, we have a graph of relative data as shown, where the maximum and minimum values are 1 and negative 1, meaning 1 times maximum value and negative 1 times the maximum value. Since the rotation is from the Kerr effect and is for the case where we use linearly polarized light, proportional to the magnetization of the test material, the relative data for the rotation is identical to the relative data for magnetization, which is what we were originally attempting to find. So by fitting our data to be relative to the maximum and minimum values, we're able to transfer seamlessly between the rotation that we observe, the relative strength of the Kerr effect, and thus the relative strength of the magnet. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and now understand something about the magneto-optic Kerr effect as well as how it relates to our work here at Ferrothin Film Labs.